So in the previous lecture, we were discussing about linear combinations, uh, linear independent and dependent vectors. Linear combinations, linearly are linearly independent and dependent vectors. Uh, if we look at graphically, what does it mean by linearly independent or linearly dependent vectors? How can we show it on a graph? For example, if we have uh, any two vectors in any maybe R2, so then a vector v may be uh, u is equal to, sorry, uh, maybe 0 0.1 uh, and 1, OK? This vector is this one, OK? From 1 to 1, OK? So the v vector is maybe, uh, you can say, 2, 3, OK? And this one is 2 and three, okay? This one is maybe somewhere here, this one, okay. Now, can we obtain one vector u from the other vector? No, in that case, in this case, no. They are linearly independent. But if we define it, in this case, in this particular case, we cannot obtain uh, one vector from the other vector. So one vector is maybe uh, like this, and the other vector is this, okay? Thoda se iski values ko change karein, you'll get this, u, and this is v. They have no relationship between each other. They are independent of each other. Whereas if I define uh, another vector, w, which is u plus v, okay? then this W would be what? It would be uh, the diagonal of, uh, basically sum would be U plus V, this one. Now this vector can be obtained uh, from the vectors U and V by adding them. So this is basically, if we join them, it, it, it makes a parallelogram and this is the diagonal of this parallelogram. So U is not independent of uh, other vectors u can be obtained by using u and v. So if we say that these two vectors are linearly independent, okay, linearly independent, but the vectors uh, u, v, and w, if we uh, put them in a set, this, this set is linearly dependent, linearly dependent, whereas this set, u, v, is linearly independent because in this set, any vector cannot be obtained by using some other vector. Whereas in this set, W can be obtained by taking the sum of these two vectors, okay? So this set is not linearly independent. It is dependent because one vector is dependent on the other vectors. Similarly, we, we can scale up these uh, vectors we can put a, a constant here, two times three. Now, this is again, W is sum of scalar multiples of U and V. So if we uh, look at graph of this thing, if we have U, this one, and V, this one, okay? Now, two U is what? It is the double of U. Let me change the color here. 2u is what? It is the double of u. So ye aapke paas kya jayega? It would be something like this, 2u. And 3v would be the three times of v. This would be your 3v. Now what would be the sum of 2u and 3v? It would be, I'm sorry. Give me one second, please. Uh, I forgot to switch off this thing. 
Now, what is this uh, 2U3V? Is the sum of 2U3V. This is basically nothing but this vector. So this W vector is nothing but 2U plus 3V. It is uh, basically the diagonal of this parallelogram. Now W is what? W is a linear combination combination of U and V. In fact, uh, the previous one where we had written W is equal to U plus V, this was also a linear combination by multiplying U with one and V with one. So a linear combination of one vector in terms of other vectors, uh, if we have three vectors in, in R2 is basically what? It is uh, graphically, it is the same. So W is what? It is a linear combination of U and V. W can be obtained uh, by using U and V. So W, one thing, W is a linear combination of U and V. And the other thing, W can be obtained from U and V. So this set, if we put them in a set, here, these three vectors are not linearly independent because W can be obtained from U and V. So W depends on other vectors. Whereas if we put these two vectors U and V, they are totally independent. We cannot obtain one vector from the other vector, okay? So this is a, a, a graphical interpretation of linearly independent linear combinations and linearly dependent set. I hope you can generalize uh, this concept and you can uh, imagine what is the set of linearly independent vectors if we have uh, more than two vectors, if we have n vectors. If they are linearly independent in Rn, for example, then uh, I cannot technically plot the Rn, but if if we have n vectors, then all vectors are in fact linearly independent. One vector cannot be obtained from the other vectors. Okay. Then we, we say that the set of uh, that vector is linearly independent. For example, if we have uh, u1, u2, u3, u4, and u5, all these are linear independent vectors. If we cannot write at least one vector as a linear combination of other vectors. They are independent. So this was uh, a bit of graphical interpretation of linear combination, linearly independent and dependent vectors. Now, uh, we'll discuss more about linearly independent vectors uh, after discussing uh, another basic concepts of lengths and norms. Today we are going to discuss norms, norm. Norm or in simple language, length uh, of a vector. Okay. Now in earlier classes, you uh, have studied what is the length of a vector from a region. So you might have, if we, if you have any vector uh, in R2, for example, u is equal to maybe two, three, what would be the length of this vector? It is basically denoted by u mod, and it is nothing but u1 square plus u2 square square root. And what is the length of this vector from origin? This is your origin, and it is two square plus three square, nine, four, 13 square root. So this is basically length of the, now what is the length? It is basically a distance from origin to this point. So this is your mod uh, of u or length of u and it is what under root 13, sorry. Okay. And in fact, what is this? It is basically, uh, uh, it, it can be obtained by using Pythagoras theorem. Uh, this length is two, this length is three. Okay, this is a base and this is height and how we can obtain this uh, square root of 13 and by using Pythagoras theorem, we can calculate this length. Now, uh, we 
need to generalize this concept into Rn if we want to discuss Euclidean vector spaces, okay, or other general spaces. So we need to generalize this notation as well. So norm of a vector is usually denoted by uh, norm of let let u belongs to some Rn. Okay, then u is what? U is in fact u1, u2, so on, un. It has n components. Then the norm of u is basically, uh, norm is a function, in fact, which is which transforms the vectors in R and to R. Okay, and it is defined by norm of u is equal to square root of uh, u1 square plus u2 square plus so on plus u n square. Okay. Why? Because this norm of u transforms the, the vectors in R n to the real numbers because the length is a real number. It's a constant number. Okay. So this function, in fact, norm function or a norm of any vector in R n, it is basically what? It is the length of a vector from origin. Agar aap pas R2 hai, to length hi hogi. R3 hoga, to length kya ho jagi? you must have some vector in R cube. For example, this vector, ye u vector in R cube. Now it must have three components, two, five, minus one, maybe. So it belongs to R cube. Now the length of this vector from origin, where origin is what? Zero, zero, zero. Okay. So the length would be what? U1 square plus U2 square plus U3 square in R cube. So if we have R4, we'll have four components. Five and so on. Now, along with the norm length of a vector from origin, what if we want to calculate the length of a vector from some other vector? Okay. For example, if you have uh, two vectors, one is u and the other is v. Now, what is basically the, the difference between, sorry, distance between u and v? So okay. So this is the dis distance between u and v. How to compute it? If you two points, you have to distance calculate them. So the distance formula, what did you study? What did you study? That was d is equal to what? y2 minus y1 whole square plus yeah, x2 minus x1. Uh, huh. x2 minus x1 whole square. This is the distance. Aap logo ne do points ke darmiyan, ye distance ka formula padha hai. Now we are going to define this distance in norm. Okay. So ab norm mein kya hoga? Norm of, uh, norm mein hum isko kaise denote karenge? If we have two vectors and we want to compute the distance between two vectors and uh, those vectors are u, where u is defined here, and v is what? v is defined by v1, v2, so on, vn. Okay. Then the distance between these two vectors, d of u, v, is denoted by norm of u minus v. Okay. Norm of u minus v is what? It is nothing but uh, u1 minus v1 u1 minus v1, u2 minus v2, and so on, un minus vn, whole square. So it is u1 minus v1, whole square, plus u2 minus v2, whole square, plus so on, plus un minus vn, whole square. So this is the generalization of the distance in uh, in xy plane. Okay. okay, x1 minus y1, whole square, x2 minus y2, whole square. So this is the generalization of that distance in Rn. Now this uh, is basically distance formula in, in Rn. Okay. If there is, uh, if n is three, then it is what? U1 minus V1 plus a whole square plus U2 minus V2 whole square plus U3 minus V3 whole square. So this is how we can compute the distance. Now, this norm has certain properties. Uh, we need to discuss those properties. If you have any question, you can ask.
in this, if you have any question, you, you can ask me. The properties of norm. Properties. The first property is what? Norm of any vector in Rn. For example, for all u belongs to uh, Rn. Okay. First property is what? Norm of any vector is always positive. Because the length is always positive. The second property is norm of any vector is zero if and only if that vector is zero. Okay. Number three is norm of a scalar multiple of a vector is equal to mod of that scalar times norm of that vector. K times U. अगर आपके पास k times u है तो k times u क्या होगा k times u one whole square plus k times u two whole square plus so on plus k times u n whole square okay now you can take common k outside which is k square k square square root k square square root times u one square plus so on plus u n square now what is this k square under root it is mod of k times norm of u okay i hope you know this k square square root is mod of k so uh, technically this is true scalar multiple of a norm of a vector is basically equal to mod of a scalar the this mod is basically absolute of k because k is a scalar. The mod of k is absolute value of k, which is if k is negative, then it would become a positive number. The next property is uh, the distance between two vectors. Distance between two vectors means norm of u minus v is always equal to norm of v minus u. So whatever the order you keep in this, the distance formula, it doesn't matter because it will give you a positive distance always. Next property is uh, basically norm of u minus v is less or equal to norm of u minus w plus norm of w minus v. Uh, or you can write it in this way, d of uv is less than or equal to d of u w plus d of w v, this one. Balki, uh, isse pehle, let me write this one as uh, sixth one and fifth one is uh, this one. For all uv plus uv, uh, the norm of u plus v is less or equal to norm of u plus norm of v. This is the basically the generalization of this property. This is the distance. This property is between the distances and this is basically, it is called triangular or triangular inequality. Men will discuss. Uh, this one is the fifth property. Okay. Now, what is this triangle inequality? If you have a, a triangle, okay, this is your u vector, and this is maybe your v vector, and this is your u plus v vector. Okay. In a triangle, uh, length of uh, one side of a triangle is always less than or equal to the sum of lengths of other two sides. This is what we call triangle inequality. So this is what we have written. For example, if you are looking at this, then the length of this side is always less than or equal to length of this plus length of this. This is called the triangle inequality. 
these are some of the properties of uh, basic properties of the norm. Uh, you have to keep these properties in, in, in your mind. Now let's uh, discuss norm graphically. What does it mean by, uh, there are different kinds of norms we can define. Uh, Abhi, the definition which we have defined right now is u1 square plus u2 square plus so on plus un square. This is called Euclidean norm. Okay. But in certain situations, we need some other kind of norms as well. This is a Euclidean or natural norm, you can say that, which works perfectly in Rn. Okay. There are other definitions as well. This is the first definition. The definition which is basically called one norm. This is basically called two norm. Why this is called two norm? Because we have uh, uh, scales here. And this is basically uh, the scale root. The one norm is uh, defined by sum i from one to n mod of ui. This. And what is this? This is uh, u1 mod plus u2 mod plus so on plus un mod. In this kind of norm, what you do, you take the sum of absolute values of all the components, okay? But this length will be slightly different from that length, okay? Humne R square, mein, sorry, ye, ye, U2, mein, norm two mein defined, ye, Euclidean norm. Okay. Another kind of uh, norm is basically defined uh, by U norm P and it is called P norm. And it is nothing but uh, Pth square root of U1 P plus U2 P plus so on plus U N P. Okay. If P2 hoga, then what will happen? Uh, this one. Okay. If P1 hoga, then what will happen? This one. Okay. P1 means there is no root. So this one is called P norm. For example, if you define this define uh, this three norm, so what will happen? Cube root of U1 cube plus U2 cube plus so on plus U n cube, okay? And P uh, is basically, uh, in fact, I don't want to go into more details of this. P is greater than zero, less than infinity, and P belongs to, in fact, R. P can be any fraction number. P, P can be any real number, in fact, but don't go into the detail of this. For, for the time being, you just, uh, remember that p is any uh, integer positive. Uh, you will discuss these kind of properties of norms uh, in linear algebra too, if you take that that course. Now, what is what does it mean by graphically? Agar ap, uh, there is one more norm which is called uh, maximum norm. Maximum norm or infinity norm. Okay. And that norm is defined by U infinity, and this is nothing but maximum from I one to N UI mod. And how do we define it? If you have a vector u, which has components u1, u2, so on, un, you take only the maximum component of that vector from all those vectors, for, 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 from all those components. Uh, let me give you an example of this, maybe here on the other board. 
Is there any question in the chat window? Uh, solution key of the quizzes. I think they have already uploaded on LMS. No, sir, fake quiz ke wahan pe to. उधर लिंक आई थिंक है मेरे ख्याल में यू चेक अगर लिंक ना हुआ आप तो यू कैन आस्क मी फॉर द लिंक ओके थैंक यू व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ऑल दीस नॉम्स इन फैक्ट वी कैन नॉट क्वांटिफाई दीस नॉम्स देयर इज ओनली वन मेथड इफ वी अस्यूम दैट द नॉम ऑफ फॉर ऑल वेक्टर्स For all u belongs to R n, ठीक है या R R two में अगर करें, ठीक है and for all u belongs to R square such that norm of u is one, then we can imagine what kind of norms are these and what is the uh, the difference between all these norms, ठीक है we are assuming that all norms have length 1 all vectors if we plot u2 norm with all the vectors having length 1 it in in r2 it will give us a circle with radius 1 okay this is what this is a u2 norm means all the vectors who have length 1 they will basically uh they can be plotted here on on the on this circle okay this is a complete circle so this any point from the origin basically any vector from the origin it will have length 1 norm 1 because it's a unit circle having radius 1 this is your euclidean norm which is typical uh, or the usual norm in r2 if you if you choose uh you uh infinity norm okay with one it will give you uh a square having length one okay now with this maximum norm means the maximum component of that vector is 1 maximum component of that vector is 1 for example aap koi bhi u yahan se likhte hain yahan pe aapke paas 1 by 2 hai 1 by 3 hai and so on some vector in between is 1 and so on and all others are maybe 0 or between 0 and 1 between minus 1 and 1 the maximum component is 1 so all other vectors jo maximum length hogi yahan se kya hogi 1 theek hai idhar se kya hogi 1 idhar se 1 idhar se 1 so ye aapke paas ek square banta hai theek hai koi bhi point le le uska kya hoga distance from the origin 1 hoga acha iske alawa jo norm 1 hai norm 1 uh, which is basically the sum of uh, all the components from i1 to n this gives you uh let me draw it differently this gives you a square of this kind this one this is your one norm you can see the distance between the lengths of the unit vectors by looking at the pictures of these kind of norms इसके अलावा जितने भी नॉर्म्स होंगे पी नॉर्म्स फॉर एग्जांपल अभी हमने डिफाइन किया था यू नॉर्म थ्री ठीक है 
यूनोम थ्री अगर वन है तो ये स्केर रूट वाले से क्या होगा थोड़ा सा जस्ट वन एस थोड़ा सा ये बड़ा होगा यू स्केर नहीं रहेगा यू आ जाएगा ये ठीक है यू आ जाएगा दिस विल बी योर थ्री नॉम अगर फोर नॉम होगा तो ये थोड़ा सा और जो है बड़ा हो जाएगा यू ठीक है एंड फाइव नॉम एंड सिक्स नॉम एंड सो ऑन वेन इट गोज टू इंफिनिटी इट विल बिकम द स्केर यस हाँ स्केर को अप्रोच करता है वेन पी अप्रोच इज टू इंफिनिटी दिस पी नॉम पी नॉम बेसिकली अप्रोच इज टू इंफिनिटी नॉम विच इज द परफेक्ट स्केर ठीक है सो दिस इज बेसिकली a kind of graph graphical interpretation of all these norms so there is a little difference between the lengths uh, according to these uh, definitions of different definitions of norms okay because in 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 some situations we cannot use the euclidean norm then we need to define some other definition okay? whenever you will see some applications of these norms you, you would better understand I hope you get it. Now, uh, some of the some of the other important properties related to norm uh, is basically one of the most important. In fact, is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. Uh, one more thing before discussing discussing Cauchy-Schwarz inequality is normalizing a vector. Normalizing a vector means uh, we can make any vector, any vector whose length is not equal to one. We can make its length equal to one. How can we normalize that vector? For example, uh, we have any vector in R n, okay. Then u vector divided by its length, okay. Then its whole norm must be one. Why? One vector is. Its every component. Here, what is basically what is. For example, if we have u vector. uh maybe 2 3 5 okay okay what's its norm its norm is 4 uh, plus 9 plus 25 so ye kya aayega 34 and 38 38 aayega theek hai iska norm 1 nahi hai theek hai u norm is not equal to 1 theek okay. hai normalizing a vector means uh make the norm of Given vector equal to one, unit vector. Make it unit vector. Okay. So how to make it unit vector? You you divide each component of that vector by its norm. And now what this would be? U vector divided by norm of U vector. It it would be what two divided by under root thirty eight, and three divided by third under root thirty eight. And five divided by under root thirty-eight. Now this is your vector. Now this is your new vector. Now this is unit vector. Why? We call it maybe a W vector. Now this is a W vector. Now if we take the norm of W, it should be what? It should be one. If we are taking norm of W, in fact, we are taking the norm of U over norm of U. Okay. So, how to make a vector a unit vector? How can we make it? We divide each component of that vector by its norm. What if the vector is already a unit vector? 
वुड दिस बी इफेक्टेड यूनिट वेक्टर की क्या डेफिनेशन है उसका नो वन हो तो आप इसको हर कंपोनेंट को वन से डिवाइड करेंगे तो इट वॉन्ट चेंज एनी थिंग इट वुड रिमेन सेम ठीक है तो यूनिट वैक्टर को इफ वी यूज दिस डेफिनेशन टू नॉर्मलाइज दैट वैक्टर इट वॉन्ट चेंज एनी थिंग इट वुड रिमेन द यूनिट वैक्टर बट इफ अ वैक्टर इज नॉट अ यूनिट वैक्टर देन दिस प्रोसीजर इज कॉल्ड नॉर्मलाइजिंग अ वैक्टर मीन्स मेकिंग इट्स नो इक्वल टू वन In fact, you are trying to make it a unit vector. Uh, any question? No. Sir, another question from the previous. जी 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 बेटा. Step two वो Euclidean norm नहीं होगा. कौन सा? If P is anything except two, that won't be a Euclidean norm. Yes, that won't be a Euclidean norm. If P is two, then it is Euclidean norm. Okay, it's the usual distance in uh, Euclidean spaces. That's why we call it Euclidean norm. Uh, unit vectors, yeah, vectors having norm one, uh, you would have already discussed in your earlier classes. For example, in in x y plane, what are the unit vectors? I and J, I and J, ठीक है और I क्या होता है This is your vector I, and this is unit vector. और इसके components क्या होते हैं One zero, and this is your unit vector J, and what are the component of this uh, this vector? It is zero one. Okay. Similarly, our cube में unit vectors क्या होंगे They are I J सॉरी I यहां पे होगा I J एन K यूनिट वैक्टर्स इस तरह आप डिनोट करते थे ना यूनिट वैक्टर्स को तो I यूनिट वैक्टर इज वॉट इट इज वन जीरो जीरो J वैक्टर इज वॉट जीरो वन जीरो एंड K वैक्टर इज वॉट जीरो जीरो वन ऑल दीज वैक्टर्स आर बेसिकली दे हैव लेंथ वन मीन्स नॉम वन अब अगर आप इस कॉन्सेप्ट को जनरलाइज करें R N में ठीक है देन वी डी नोट यूनिट स्टैंडर्ड यूनिट वैक्टर्स बाय ई वन ई टू सो ऑन ई एन ठीक है वेर ई वन इज वॉट ई वन इज वॉट इट इज वन जीरो जीरो सो ऑन जीरो दिस इज योर ई वैक्टर ई वन वैक्टर विच इज अ यूनिट वैक्टर ओके एंड ई टू यूनिट वैक्टर और वैक्टर इज जीरो वन जीरो सो ऑन जीरो And so on. E n would be what? It is zero, zero, zero. So on, zero, one. The last one will be one. All these vectors having norm, the norm of E i vector is equal to one. Okay, where i is from i from one to so on n. Whenever I write this notation, I hope you understand. I could be one. I could be two, three, and so on. N. So all these vectors have length one. They are all unit vectors in R n. Now from now on, you are not going to write i j. You will write e one, e two, so on, e n. These will be the unit vectors in Euclidean spaces. Okay, in R n. Uh, let's combine. Uh, this thing with the linear combinations can we write any 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 element in rn as a linear combination of these unit vectors for example in r2 r2 mein koi bhi vector hai 2 3 for example can we write 2 times 1 0 plus 3 times 0 1 fix it na so this vector u u vector is in fact 2 times e1 plus 3 times e2 where e1 is what it is a unit vector in r2 which is 1 0 and e2 is a unit vector in r2 which is 0 1 
So every vector in R in, in any Euclidean space can be written as a linear combination of its unit vectors. Okay. So in general, uh, if we have any element in R n, in R n, then uh, for example, u vector, it has components u1, u2, so on, un. Then it can be written as u1 times 1, 0, 0, so on, 0, plus u2 times 0, 1, 0, so on, 0, plus u, so on, plus so on, plus un times 0, 0, so on, 1. It means you can write u1 e1 plus u2 e2 plus so on plus un en. Okay. Give it. Yes. U is linearly dependent on these unit vectors. Okay. And these unit vectors are basically called standard unit vectors. Okay. These unit vectors are called standard unit vectors. Because there are, there might be other unit vectors as well in R2, whose length is one. For example, if you U vector, uh, one by two, one by two. The length is one, but that is not a standard unit vector. Standard unit vectors कौन से सिर्फ ये वाले होते हैं। R2 के standard unit vectors कौन से हैं? I J ये वाले। R cube के ये वाले। R n के ये वाले। ठीक है? These are standard unit vectors. So every element, uh, this is possible for all U belongs to R n. ठीक है? अगर आप इसको R2 कह दें, for all U belongs to R2. So u2 ko hum kaise lik, u ko kaise lik sakte hain? u1 e1 plus u2 e2. Where u e1 is what? This is 1, 0, and this is what? This, this is 0, 1. Means every element in R2 can be written as a linear combination of these standard unit vectors. Okay? What does it mean? For all, yeah, for any, for every element. Every element in R2, every element in R2 can be written as a linear combination of E1 and E2. Okay? What does it mean? Every element in R2 can be written as a linear combination of of e1 and e2 you agree with this now i'm going to tell you a very confusing statement which you need to concentrate on what does it mean Every element of R2 can be written as a linear combination of E1 and E2. It means R can be generated by with these two vectors. R2 can be generated with the help of these two vectors. Okay. If you have these two vectors, you can two vectors ko aap linear combination. Okay. Where the linear combination of the coefficients and scalars are, who is belong to R? R. Ko. R. Ko. Now, if you take all possible linear combinations with R, then what will R2. All possible linear combination of these two vectors, E1 and E2. Okay. I'm going to repeat it. Look, okay. linear combination, what do we say? U is. Uh, u1 e1 plus u2 e2 where u1 and u2 are what u1 and u2 they are scalars and they belong to r in combination major vector coefficient they are scalars basically 
अब इसमें आर को वेरी करते जाए इन इन यू वन यू टू को आप ऑल पॉसिबल कॉम्बिनेशन फ्रॉम आर ले लें तो क्या बन जाएगा एंड फुट इट फुट देम हियर तो आपके पास क्या बनेगा यूल गेट आर टू ठीक है वट डज इट मीन इट मीन्स it means e1 and e2 generates r2 yes no question and we write it we write it as r2 is generated by e1 e2 okay r2 is generated by e1 e2 and r3 is generated by obviously e1 e2 e3 rn is generated by e1 e2 e3 so on en Let's have another look. Uh, on this concept. If we say that you can every you can be written as a linear combination of e one and e two, okay, then. set of all possible linear combinations where yeah with with u1 u2 belongs to r अगर आप यू को ऐसे लिए कॉम्बिनेशन की फॉर्म में लिख सकते हैं स्टैंडर्ड यूनिट वेक्टर में वेर यू वन यू टू बिलोंग्स टू आर अब यू वन और यू टू की वैल्यूज वेरी करना शुरू कर दें बाय टेकिंग दीज वैल्यूज फ्रॉम आर तो सेट ऑफ ऑल पॉसिबल लिनियर कॉम्बिनेशन जो होगा वो क्या होगा द सेट ऑफ ऑल पॉसिबल लिनियर कॉम्बिनेशन विद दिस इज कॉल्ड स्पेन of e1 and e2 span of e1 time now this one span of e1 and e2 you Very e1 and e2, yeah, by w1 or uh, u1 and u2, you'll get uh, linear combinations. Okay, the vectors u, if you vary u1 and u2 uh, in R, you'll have infinite many uh, vectors. And this span, the these two vectors, and the set of all linear combination basically is called span of these two vectors. And here, what is the set of all linear combinations it is basically r2 so we can say that r2 is a span of e1 and e2 okay because r can be obtained by taking all linear combinations of uh, these two vectors unit vector e1 and e2 so this is called Uh, R two is a span of uh, E one and E two. Similarly, R three is a span of E one, E two, and E three, and so on. R n is a span of E one, E two, three, uh, E three, E four, and so on. E n. Okay. So here, let me 
uh, come back to this. If we have these n unit vectors, then standard unit vectors, then we say that, sorry, R n is basically a span of uh, E1, E2, so on En, this one. Or we can say that Rn is generated by these vectors E1, E2, so on En generated by this. So these are basically the basic concepts of spanning and generating set. We'll discuss these uh, concepts in more detail when we'll discuss spanning and the and, and, and basis set of any vector space of Euclidean spaces in fact. Now let's uh, come back to norms. Uh, yes. Now let's come back to norms and try to prove the uh, cauchy schwarz inequality. Okay. Uh, before that, we need to discuss the inner product or dot product of vectors. Let's discuss dot product now first. Let me clean these boards. Now we are going to discuss inner product of vectors. I'm going to repeat this because the recording was stopped. Uh, in inner product, if we define inner product of two vectors in R2, then X, if it is, if it belongs to R2, then it has two components, X1, X2, Y has Y1, Y2. Then we define the dot product X dot Y. We multiply the respective components and add them. So X1 into Y1 plus X2 into Y2. This is how we define dot product in R2. But if we generalize it in Rn, and we assume that we have two vectors u and v in Rn, having components u1, u2, so on, un, then how do we define the dot product u dot v? Here, we call it inner product of vectors. And uh, there is another notation, uh, an updated or new notation we use for the dot product or inner product of two vectors. Uh, in the same way, we define uh, the dot product in R2. What we do here, we multiply the respective components of uh, these two vectors and add them. This is how we define inner product of two vectors in Rn. This is basically the generalization of uh, the definition of dot product in R2. If you have any question, you can ask me. For example, if we, uh, if we have uh, maybe u vector is nothing but here I have given an example and it is uh, u is zero, one, negative one, one, negative one. And v is uh, square root of five, one, negative three, three and negative one. How do we define their dot product or inner product? So inner product of u, comma v is what? It is you multiply the respective components and add them, okay? The first component is zero, the second component is one, the third component is plus three, the fourth component is three, and the fifth component is one. So you add them, uh, you, you get the inner product of these two vectors. Okay, now what if a very important result or a very important property. If uh, we try to find the dot product of same vectors, okay? Very important property. Uh, dot product of u with u, okay? According to the definition, what is the dot product of u with itself? It is nothing but u1 times u1 plus u2 
times u2 plus so on plus un times un because you multiply uh, the corresponding components of u with itself so what do we get here u1 square plus u2 square plus so on plus un square now if you remember that what is this thing it is the square of norm of u euclidean norm of u okay so dot product of u with itself is uh, it 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 gives us the length uh, square of the length of u okay now from this result we can say that norm of uh, u is square root of basically inner product of u with itself so this is a very important result uh this result relates norm norm and inner product of a vector okay Um, this sir g yes sir i'm sorry for interrupting sir could we please move to the previous board uh, for a second i forgot to note some things down this one maybe he, you can ask the question if you have any sir is inner product and dot product the same thing yes डॉट प्रोडक्ट का हमने एक नया नाम रख दिया है इनर प्रोडक्ट ठीक है लेटर ऑन सो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई वॉज टेलिंग यू दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द इनर प्रोडक्ट ऑफ अ वैक्टर विद इट सेल्फ एंड अ नॉर्म ऑफ अ वैक्टर ओके this relates basically the two concepts of lengths and dot products they are related with each other okay uh now inner products also have certain properties i'm going to write those properties and then uh we'll try to prove certain important results and we will we'll generalize them equally for example uh the pythagoras theorem in our hand what would be the shape shape of pythagoras theorem and uh triangular inequalities and cauchy schwarz inequalities what so these kind of results will will prove uh after discussing the properties of in a product so properties of in a product the first property is the product uh, or you can take two vectors for all u v belongs to r n the first property is the inner product is commutative the product is commutative this is called commutative property i hope you remember commutative property uh we commutative law or commutative property we have discussed these properties in uh, vector spaces the second thing which we uh, which is the property of the inner product is uh distributivity in in this property we need another vector for example for all u v and w belongs to r n uh w dot u plus v you can say w u plus v inner product is equal to w u plus w v this is basically the distributive property of uh, 
the dot product. In simple notation, how do we define these properties? This one is what? U dot V is equal to V dot U. Okay, this is in simple notation, in dot notation. And this one is what? It is W dot U plus V. It is equal to what? W dot U plus W dot V. This is what we have written here. Uh, if you are not, this one is W. Okay. So this is what W dot U plus W dot V. This is called distributivity property. You can uh, look in, look at my slides. It's mentioned here. So another property is uh, associativity, uh, which is also very important. We are going to discuss it while proving the other properties or other uh, things related to the norms and inner products. Uh, properties? How many properties? Two properties. The third one is, the third one is C times inner product of UV is equal to C U V or this is again equal to U C V means if you have any scalar where C is some scalar, for all C belongs to R and U, V belongs to Rn, okay? Where C is some scalar, remember it, okay? We can multiply uh, an inner product with a scalar after taking the inner product of two vectors, or we can multiply that scalar with at least one of these two vectors in C can be multiplied with the vector U. This is the scalar multiplication of uh, uh, a scalar with a vector. Remember, I hope you remember this, scalar multiplication in vector spaces, Euclidean vector spaces. Or you can multiply the C with V as well. It doesn't change anything. It is equivalent to say C times U dot V. This is equal to uh, C U dot V or U dot CV. So this is what we are talking about in this property. So dot product may have dot product in a key bad PC constant multiply curve. Yeah, PC a vector co pehle us constant multiply curve. It doesn't change anything. This is the property of dot product or inner product. If you have any question, you can ask me. The next property is the fourth one is inner product of u of u with itself inner product of u with itself is always greater than zero okay why it is always greater than zero because inner product of u with itself is is what it is norm of u square and the, norm is always positive. The next property is inner product of U uh, with any other vector, sorry, with itself is zero if and only if the vector itself is zero. Okay. So these are uh, some of the certain properties, basic properties of the inner product. And uh, another property which we are basically going to use is the generalization of distributive property, distributivity prop property, distributive property, sorry. And that property is uh, nothing but if we have four vectors, for example, let U, V, W, and uh, maybe 
what I have written here, Z. Z, they belongs to Rn. Then U plus V, inner product W plus Z. This is basically a generalization of distributive property. In distributive property, what we had written W comma U plus V. Okay, but here now we have uh, two vectors here, sum of two vectors and sum of two vectors here. Now, first we apply the distributive property by choosing, by taking this one as a single vector. Okay, we assume that this is some X vector. Okay, okay. Now it becomes a kind of distributive property. So we can write here U plus V W plus U plus V comma Z inner product, okay? Now, as we know that the inner product is commutative, commutative Hanna property. So we can interchange the places of these things. So it is W U plus V, okay? Plus, Z comma U plus V because the inner product is commutative. Next, we can use again the distributive property. Okay. So we can write it W U plus W V plus here again, distributive property Z U plus Z V. Okay. So again, we can use the commutative property to to write uh, U. This is V W U. We can write U W. Okay. Plus V W. Plus U Z. Plus V Z. So this is what, this is our U plus V inner product W plus Z. This is equal to this. Now, how do we define it? We take the inner product of first U uh, of U with W and then inner product of U with Z. And then we take the inner product of, and then we take the inner product of V with W and then V with Z. So we get, we can expand this inner product into this inner product, okay? I hope you get it. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask me. So remember this property, we'll, we'll use this property in proving certain other properties. For example, cauchy schwarz inequality and Pythagoras theorem and triangular inequality and many other problems. Okay. If you have any question, you can ask me. Otherwise, we are going to stop here today. Hello, second fifth property, please. Dekha diyo upper wale board pe. Kaun si property? Fifth property. Fifth one. Yeah. I have. Uh, no, this one. Yes. Inner product of a vector with itself is zero if and only if the vector is itself zero. 